Hello and welcome to topic four of your summer assignment, part one, the lecture about balancing equations and types of reactions. You're going to find that this is largely review, so hopefully you will be pretty confident in what you've already written and I can just kind of make some clarification, etc. So as usual, make sure that you've created your foundation in your learning target notebook before you are watching this lecture video. And the information from this is gonna come from this packet rather than from your textbook. So um, I've tried to give the packet pages on these as well as um, the ideas later of what you're doing to actually do the practice. So, so just make sure that you are using the packet as your guide. Your book really doesn't cover a lot of the information that's kind of review from first year chemistry about chemical reactions. You'll see that this year we'll do a little bit of a different approach to chemical reactions, but I need you to have this background good and solid. So that's right. the reason that this is a part of your summer assignment. So, long story short, if you've not yet created your learning targets, please make sure that you use this as a guide, use the packet, create your learning targets from the packet and from what you know, and then um, you'll be ready to start the video. Here goes. All right, so remember please that always when we're balancing equations, the reason that we balance equations is to satisfy the law of conservation of mass. Um, this is the chemical piece of chemical reactions, the idea that in chemical reactions we do not create or destroy matter. We simply rearrange who those atoms are attached to. Um, so we need to always keep in mind that this is something that has to be satisfied in order for us to be able to talk quantitatively about chemical reactions at all. Also remember that the only thing that you're allowed to do to balance a chemical equation would be to add coefficients in your reaction equation. Uh, you have to have the, the formulas for each of the individual pieces in the equation written correctly first, and you'll need to make sure that for ionic compounds and acids, you're balancing charges, etc. This is going to be largely review of nomenclature as well as uh, review from classification. So I just wanted to make sure that we touched on that. Okay. Remember, there are five types of reactions that you learned in first year chemistry. Um, you should have, and I've got them pictorially here for you, as well as in word form, as well as a whole bunch of examples that I'm actually going to go ahead and classify with you. So remember that your five options would be synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion of a hydrocarbon. Um, remember that synthesis means to come together, decomposition means to break apart. You're going to discover as we keep going this year that single and double replacements are not as straightforward as they seemed, but in a single replacement, an element kicks out something else and becomes a part of the compound, and in a double replacement, the two ions in a compound switch. This is not quite that straightforward for real. And combustion reactions can be complete, which forms CO2 and H2O, or can be incomplete if there's not enough oxygen present and form carbon monoxide and H2O. So you definitely want to make sure that you're aware of those two ideas. Let's practice looking at some of the patterns here, and um, then I'll have you do a few on your own at the end. So... Um, when we start to look, we want to be paying attention to what's happening. And so I can see that this is an ionic compound and an acid. And this is going to lead me to think that perhaps this might be a double replacement. So I'm looking for the first half switching. And sure enough, that's what happens. So this is a double replacement reaction. In the next one, I see a hydrocarbon plus oxygen. This is the only way to identify a combustion of a hydrocarbon is to be on the lookout for that. Technically, this is a redox reaction, which is um, also another option for what we can call single replacement reactions, but we separate these apart um, on their own because the pattern is different. So in a combustion reaction, some of the oxygen combines with the carbon and some of it combines with the hydrogen so that you get carbon dioxide and water or carbon monoxide and water. So this is a combustion. Notice that in the next one, we see that the chlorine is by itself and potassium bromide is a compound and then bromine is by itself and potassium chloride is a compound. So the chlorine 
in essence, kicked out the bromine. This is a single replacement reaction. This is because we have an element and a compound, okay? Um, and only one thing is taking the place of one thing, so that's kind of where that name arose from. In the next one, we have only one reactant, so there's only one thing this can be, and that would be a decomposition. There's no way that this can do anything except separate or sit there. And then finally, in the next one, we have two elements. The only thing two elements can do would be to come together. And so this is a synthesis. You will, in the next lecture, learn more synthesis and decomposition rules for specific things so that you have some to memorize and you can predict what will be formed. So it will be really important that you really pay attention at that point. But for right now, we're just recognizing the patterns. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, number these now and ask that you try to uh, check, do these yourself and then check them. So of these last ones that are here, there are seven that are left. Um, I will come back and talk about a few of them and then I'll ask you to put answers for a few of them in the question at the end of the um, video. All right, so go ahead and stop the video. Let me say this in the right order. Go ahead and copy these examples into your learning targets, then stop the video, try the classification yourself, then start the video again to check what I do with you. Okay, go ahead and stop the video to copy. Okay, so I want to go through a few of these with you, and then I will ask you to put the answers to a few of them in the questions at the end of the video. So let's look carefully at um, what we have. Number one is this carbon, um, in essence, is taking the place of the aluminum. So this is a single replacement reaction. This is actually a very unusual single replacement, so we would not really classify this as a single replacement in what we do. You wouldn't predict those products, but um, it is, in essence, a single replacement. Um, I want to skip number two for right now. Number three is also a single replacement. The aluminum replaces the manganese in the compound. Oops, sorry. Um, number four is a decomposition. Number five is a synthesis. And I'm going to ask you to put the answers to two, six, and seven in the questions at the end. Make sure that you have all three questions answered that, and that you watch the video all the way to the end. And this is it for this. So um, just a quick review that this was why we balance equations and how we classify reactions.